have what I think is a very exciting presentation on streamlining manufacturing processes using automated CNC nesting. So again, I'm your host. I am an enterprise solutions champion. I work with our premium support accounts. Um, we have two speakers from the Autodesk TrueNest team that will speak to automating CNC programming and linking that to your MRP and ERP systems. So we can skip over the safe harbor for now. And with that, I will transfer the presenter over. First of all, good morning, everyone. My name is Dylan McLean. I am a product specialist sales executive with the Autodesk Digital Manufacturing Group. And I represent a number of products in the Autodesk product innovation platform that make up the, or comprise, or part of the make portfolio. So we have a number of technologies that are designed for how products are made. And that's kind of where Autodesk wants to be known as the place to go to make something. And so the products that we're here to talk about today are, is, is TrueNet specifically for uh, automated laser nesting and CNC cutting. Um, as you know, Autodesk is moving towards the how we design, how we make, and how we use products. And TrueNest is a product designed to uh, automate and improve the processing capabilities for sheet metal, heavy plate, uh, and other materials as well. We focus on four areas of, uh, of impact. The first is getting the most from your material. You buy a lot of raw stock as a, a, a customer and a fabricator, and we want to make sure that as a resource, we're getting the most from that as possible. We also focus on the ability to be flexible with what machine tools we allow our customers to use. The short answer is any machine tool that you throw at us, we're, we're capable of operating. The third and fourth points on the, on the slide are the most important, though is the deep integration with compatible data. So when we talk about data compatibility, we're talking about a new number of forms of data, whether it is uh, design data, being able to work with uh, any CAD platform, whether it be Inventor or any others that are out on the market today. And when we talk about the deep integration with business systems, TrueNest is a standalone system that has the ability to be the center point, essentially, of a number of different systems uh, in any fabricator's operation. So whether it is an ERP system, a PDM system like Vault, TrueNest becomes a repository for what inventory you have in stock, what machine capabilities you have available to you, what designs are in, uh, have been first article inspected and are ready for production. Uh, TrueNest becomes this system by which all of the other operations kind of communicate together. What we allow for is the ability to manufacture flat nests on any material, so whether it be wood, metal, composites, leather. Uh, we have other operations that are doing stuff in the life sciences that are nesting other advanced materials as well. We have the ability to uh, process for any type of material uh, and on any machine tool. And so when you have thick material down on the bottom right, uh, for example, we're able to uh, nest any bevels or tampers or, or any, any information like that. The goal here is to help you be competitive in the market today, to be able to respond quickly to customer demands, to quote accurately, and to manage the process from design to fabrication uh, in as efficiently a po as efficient a po process as possible. And so what that means is we're allowing the data flow from design to end product to flow without imp uh, you know, imposition. And th the product is designed uh, as a, a way to solve challenges in the marketplace today. Um, by manufacturing with the, the maximized efficiency, we're helping our customers achieve the lowest cost per part possible. We allow, again, that may, may, uh, the ability to stay flexible, uh, whether you're an engineer to order organization where uh, the volume at which you're produ producing parts is high, but the mix 
of parts you get on a day-to-day -day basis is essentially unknown until it gets to the machine. Uh, we, have, we have four types of customers that we, we typically run into. Again, it's the high volume, high mix, engineered order organizations that are producing high volumes at uh, high volumes of high variability parts. Then you have the mixes of volumes and variabilities, high mix, low volume, uh, low mix, high volume, and then the last of which is low mix, low volume. You know, those are more of the job shop organizations, um, the organizations that are producing prototypes, for example. Uh, but regardless of what combination of mix and volume you produce at, Trias gives you the ability to automate that programming for whatever machine tool you have in your shop for. So it's a very simple workflow. Uh, Anthony Mazzillo, who's on the call as well, will help you see exactly what that workflow looks like. But essentially, it is you load your profile, create a nest with parts inside of parts, common line cutting, uh, and some advanced nesting features. You generate the CNC code to operate the machine tool, and then post-process for the shop floor. The last topic over here is communication with any ERP or MRT systems are different from customer to customer. Um, but what the point, I, I guess the point we, we try to make is that the more we can connect manufacturing data with other systems in your organization, the more valuable that data becomes, and the more decisions you can base off accurate data. And these are some of the, the customers we see, whether it's in the advanced manufacturing uh, groups of transportation, aerospace, construction, or power generation. Uh, we find customers using TrueNest in different ways for all sorts of applications. TrueNest is an ODBC compliant uh, solution, which means that it has the ability as a, uh, a relational database system to communicate with any other database out there, whether it's an Oracle system or an SQL-based system. Um, TrueNest is a platform that allows that, to, that allows that communication to be streamlined simply. And so when we look at for when we look at the process of efficient nesting, it goes back to that streamlined workflow, reading native CAD files, calculating the optimum material size and efficiency, uh, and optimizing that machine throughput. We have some advanced optimizers, which I'll get into in just a second, that not only focus on the efficiency of the raw material, but also the throughput on the machine.
All right, thanks, guys. I'm going to try to share my screen. Just somebody uh, let me know if you're having trouble seeing it. <clears throat> my name is Anthony Mazzillo. I've been involved with the True Nest product line for about 10 years. I'm just going to take you through a real quick workflow example of using TrueNet so you can kind of see a live demonstration of, of how the software looks and feels. We're actually starting out here in Inventor because I wanted it to be very clear that anything in your Inventor IPT model or even information in your IAM assemblies is all available to populate that information into TrueNet. So of course the things we're interested in is are your parts appropriate for nesting? Or are they just connectors? Are they things that you buy standard off the shelf? Or are they actually things you need to cut? So TrueNest can kind of look inside each part, understand if it's a sheet metal part or if it's a part we care about for nesting. If it is a sheet metal part, we can pull out the unfolded or expanded view. We can also pull out the material name. And I saw a question earlier about grain direction. We can pull out the grain direction. And we get that grain direction depending on the customer in, in a number of different ways. It can either be set via an I property in the model. You can also just use a simple two-dimensional line segment anywhere on the face of the part. And the direction of that line segment can indicate the grain. Or finally, you can just um, call out a UCS in your model. And we can look at any of the directions of that UCS. So you could say, OK, we're always going to have a UCS in our model. Or our part is always in the same orientation. And so we can look at your UCS directions to pull out grain lines as well. So everything comes from the inventor model. And this is also important because this helps us to maintain your inventor or your CAD design of your parts as what we call our, our overall truth or our overall uh, one source to go to to find the most recent religion, revision, that is, and all the information about the part that we currently have. So you can still maintain your revision control within your PDM system, whether it's Vault or something else. And you can still maintain all of your most recent versions of the parts in your design system and always have a kind of an ongoing or active link between that system and TrueNet to be sure we're always pulling the most recent parts. Um, as I said earlier, you can either choose the inventor model or you can choose inventor assemblies. If you tell us to look at an assembly, we will dig through that assembly, understand what parts are involved, and if we see like multiple instances of the same part in your assembly, TrueNest is smart enough to automatically only translate that part in one time and adjust the quantity. Um, so you can see we've got all these different shapes. TrueNest, when it translates the parts in, is also going to do a quick geometry check to be sure that the shapes are appropriate for your cutting technology. Um, they're closed shapes. They've got no messy or duplicate geometry involved. And the other thing is if you're doing something like um, routing or punch press, we're also going to do what we call a geometry pre-tooling check, where we look at each shape and we have to cross-reference each shape we find with your tooling library to be sure that we do have some shapes in the tooling library that can satisfy every shape on your part. So especially with a punch press, that's crucial with very small cutouts or very tight radius on the, on the chamfers or the uh, fillets. Um, it's crucial to understand if you actually have some tools in your library to do all this work. And if you do have a tool that's perfect for these cutouts or perfect for some of these shapes, TrueNest is going to immediately change the color and layer of that shape so that's automatically associated with the correct tool. Um, the same thing will go for a router. Um, and so we're going to do that pre-tooling check the moment the part comes into our system so that you're sure before you ever try to do a nest 
or run the part of the machine, you're sure that it can actually run. If it doesn't, if, it, if we see any problem with that translation process, we're going to warn you right there. We're either going to circle it in the geometry view or we're going to pass you a text report that tells you everything that was wrong with the parts that we found. And um, in certain cases, TrueNet can fix problems. Like, for example, if you gave us a shape that was just slightly too small for one of your tools, but you say, okay, every time you see this size, it's okay. We really need you to expand it to this size, which is about the size for the tool. We can actually do that if you tell us it's okay. But normally, we would never do that kind of thing. We would just warn you that we found a problem. So now we have all the parts. And the, the crucial thing about this is for each part, we know the material. And inside TrueNest, we follow a very detailed material catalog. That material catalog can correspond directly to your CAD design system. The thing that's going to be slightly different about how you track the materials in your design side versus the manufacturing side is that we need to track a lot of the characteristics about the material that only really matters in terms of cutting. So we don't care about the, how the material behaves as a finished part. We only care about, okay, for this material, can we nest up to the edge on this machine, or do we have to leave a frame? Um, are there going to be plant zones we need to watch out for? And so for every material and every sheet size of that material, we will store clamp settings. And those clamp settings will tell us, okay, where the clamps exist, do we need to nest around those clamps, or are we allowed to do a material reposition? And if we can do the material reposition, we can actually build that into our post processor and cut everything we need under the clamp, then move the material, cut all the rest of the cuts, so that you're really not losing any space even though you're using clamps. I think that was another question that was asked earlier. Uh, so that material match that we get from your CAD design system, we match up the name of the material, and then using the TrueNet material catalog, we can already determine every setting that we're going to need for that nest. Now the question becomes more interesting, as Dylan said, what if you have more than one machine that can run the same material? Then, you can see right here on this page, you would either need to choose the machine manually or you would need to set up a system of rules that tell us how to assign work from one machine to the other. And those rules can be based on, you know, whatever is most important to you. You may have a newer machine that runs much faster and you always want to fill up that machine's day first and then start to push work to another machine. Or you may have different rules. Um, but the idea here is that TrueNest wants to make an intelligent decision about you know, what shape and size of material you're using and what machine we're doing the nest for. And as long as you can provide the input to tell us that, we can make that decision ourselves within the TrueNest software. And so at this point, we've done the scheduling and told TrueNest what to nest together at the same time. Now we're actually going to run the nest. So once again, a lot of things are going on behind the scenes here. Uh, but we're going to do a last minute check to be sure we have the latest version of each part. We're going to pull all the parts in. We're going to nest them for best material efficiency. And then we're going to do what Dylan mentioned earlier, which is our optimizers and our post-processing. So that was the nesting. Now we're running our head down logic, which is reversing and changing endpoints and doing everything we need to do the head down. Now we're doing the nibbling, and this was for a punch press. And so we have to run a nibbler, which is going to make the best choice of which tools to do when we have to destruct pockets, when we have to do exterior contours, and all those kind of things. So here you can kind of see the results. We've included some off-part motion simulations, so you can kind of see we've, we've done a lot of work to minimize the off-part motion. Um, and you can see this is also useful for as an unload tool for your op. And the reason you're going to need that is with the connections that Dylan was talking about to your ERP system and to your order tracking system, you're really going to get much better efficiency on nests that incorporate multiple orders into the same nest. 
So then the next question and the next problem you're going to have is, well, how do we unload efficiently and make sure we get all the parts associated with the correct order and the correct assembly? And so these kind of visual aids we can put together will help unload. We've got reference numbers here. We can color the code these either by part name or by assembly name. We can color code them by job order. And so it makes it very easy to unload. Um, the other upshot of this is I noticed there was a lot of design engineers in this call. As a de design engineer, you can kind of almost start to build production readiness from your position. And what I mean is you can do all the part translation. You can get the direct feed from the ERP and understand what orders are coming. TrueNet will automatically schedule and create those nests. And then all you really need is an end user access point down on the shop floor for somebody to log in at their machine, say, I'm at this machine, show me only the nests that we've created for this machine, let's queue them up, and let's run the materials. As each nest completes, they're going to look at TrueNest. They're going to use these screens to unload it, and then they're going to give the feedback to TrueNet that, yes, this nest was completed, all the parts were cut successfully, and then TrueNet can trigger other actions where we can feed back data to the ERP system about how much material was used, um, about which orders have been fulfilled, and other kinds of information that's useful there, and that's to archive all those old nests so that they're not cluttering up your system but you always have traceability to get back to them later. Okay. So we're also going to generate a full report of everything we did, and that goes back to the reporting back to the ERP system. But this also includes things like efficiencies, and so it helps you to track efficiency of each nested plate. But you can also see here we've got another interesting value we track, and it's cost. So not only do we tell you how much of the material did you use versus how much was scrapped, we can also tell you the cost of your nest. And if you enter the cost per linear foot or per square foot or whatever unit you use to track your cost of material, you can enter that into our material catalog. And the great thing about this is if you do this and you have, let's say, multiple different sheet sizes of the same exact material, TrueNest can then be used as a cost comparison tool where you can go back and look and say, okay, well, if we run this on the larger sheet, we get a better efficiency. But the larger sheet costs twice as much per linear foot. So does it really make sense to nest on the larger sheet? And so by tracking this total cost, we will tell you exactly what it will cost to produce the nest. And so that's how TrueNest makes the ultimate decision about which material size to use when it actually runs your net. Um, and that same thing goes for remnants. So if you're tracking any partial material plate, TrueNet has the ability to track any size remnant, not only rectangular remnants, and do these calculations not only on the blank sheet sizes, but also do a cost calculation on remnants. And if you have a cost adjuster for a remnant where you may actually value that more because you're getting it off the shop floor, you can actually adjust the cost for a remnant. So this cost, even though it kind of blends in with all our other reporting features, this cost is a crucial indicator that tells TrueNest which nesting result is the best one to go with. So Dylan did spend a lot of time on the optimizers, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I did notice that we have a lot of laser users, and our optimizers for the laser, as Dylan mentioned, is trying to reduce the pierces. And we also have a lot of punch press and router users. And so the optimizers there are going to be very different indeed. So those optimizers are going to have a completely different flavor. But the cutting technology is really going to dictate which optimizers we choose to plug in. We've also found recently that our customers who can find the benefits of multiple different cutting technologies can drive them all from the same TrueNet system and really increase the efficiency in their overall facility by only pushing the work to the machines that it makes the most sense to, to do the work on. 
So if you've got nets that are heavy on long straight cuts, those are going to be more suited towards the laser. If it's more intricate cutouts that have unique shapes that we could do on a punch press perfectly, then sure, you would run it on a punch press. And hopefully to answer the question I had earlier, we can use unique and custom shapes on a punch press. You simply feed up a DXF file of the shape, you define it in our tooling list, and then you can start to use your custom shape. I also saw another question about multi-turret punch machines. We absolutely support multi-turret punch machines. We normally uh, think of a single turret as like the primary or the main turret, so we're always going to try to use tools from that turret. But we can also think of the others as like a backup and always kind of switch back and forth if we need to. So we definitely support those kind of machines. Um, I want to mention one last thing here. I stopped the video a couple times so I could talk. But from start to end, the video the clip that I just played was about four minutes long. And so that's literally all the time it takes on a day-to-day -day use of TrueNest to bring in your new parts, schedule them for nesting, create the nested results, review those results, send them to the shop floor to be to be cut. So it's, what, it's about four minutes. And if you automate any of these steps, because I did them all manually, if you automate any of those steps, like a connection to your vault system or a connection to your ERP, or um, you can automate the entire thing and make it a lifetime process, that time to process the data and get it through our system even goes down from there. Uh, and that goes back towards streamlining your process. Keep in mind that when we run the nest, I mentioned, we're always checking back at your original CAD source to be sure that we've got the latest version of each part shape. So we're trying to streamline the process, but also guarantee that you're getting the parts written that you need. So with that being said, um, I'm going to check back and see if we had any more questions. I'm going to ask Dylan to join me again for a question and answer. And then I think Matt LeMay is going to take over and kind of put a, put a bow on.
Okay, um, I'm just going to show a couple slides here at the end, and then following that, we can continue on with the conversations until everyone has to drop. Um, so if everyone has the opportunity, if you would like to fill out a survey so you can let us know if this was useful for us and how we can improve in the future, we have a QR code on the screen that you can scan, and we also have a URL that I will post in the comment section. We also talk, uh, wanted to talk about what's next. Um, a couple of the events we're having at the Autodesk University in Las Vegas. We have several classes that relate well to inventor and sheet metal and composites manufacturing, and I've listed these here as well. We also have a great event that's the Majestic User Group, and maybe I'll leave it up to Anthony to explain that a little further. Sure. So. This is um, traditionally a dedicated conference we have for existing and future or existing and potential users of our products, and it kind of gives us the the opportunity to get a lot of our different users in the same place to kind of understand where we're at, where we're going with our software in the next year, and to mostly collect feedback from our user base as to where they're going and where they want to see our software evolve to. And so we use this as a great opportunity to drive where our software is going, but also kind of showcase the kind of projects we're currently doing and the kind of thing we really want to start doing more of. So any of our consulting opportunities we're going to showcase at this so you can understand that TrueNet just isn't an out-of-the-box solution where you can take the CD, plug it in, and go from there. You can always do that, but that's really just square one of, of the full TrueNest experience. And it's hard to explain in this type of a forum, but it becomes much easier when we can have enough time to share individual customer experiences. Those customers will actually be there to recount you know, their, their successes with, with the product as a solution. We'll also be able to show some of the kind of outside-the-box thinking that has gotten TrueNest to the place it is and kind of show how within the overall framework of Autodesk and its bigger plans, how TrueNest fits and how we see it evolving in the future. So it's definitely a great opportunity. There's going to be chances for one-on-one -on -one meeting with our development staff and our consulting staff. There's going to be a roundtable discussion where each industry kind of consolidates and has a little questionnaire to answer, but more importantly can talk openly with other users from similar industries and understand how they're solving the challenges they face and um, can collaborate and, and hopefully in the past this has always happened, but hopefully in the future get our customers to not only look at things within their own world but kind of see what's going on in the general world around them and help to, to solve their challenges in that way. So it's a, it's a great experience. It's a fairly low-cost way to get a great introduction to our product um, without having to go through the learning curve and the setup process that would be involved with like a 30-day trial of our product. So um, definitely a great opportunity. We can provide more information. And I think what we may want to do is find a some some way to answer the rest of these questions. I think we're going to run out of time here. But I think we can find a way to post answers to the rest of these questions as long as we can save these questions because a lot of these have great answers. And I wish I could answer them right now because I feel like it would help to paint TrueNest in the right light. I really want to answer all these questions we've got, but I don't think we have time at this point. There's a lot of great questions here. As you can see in the chat, Matt has posted and, a, a... Go ahead. Yep, I, I uh, was just going to say exactly the same thing as you. Um, if you have further questions, maybe we weren't able to answer the question that um, you had in the uh, chat window. Um, we have TrueNest at sales at autodesk.com. You can reach out to that email address, and we can answer those questions later on. And I will post the link right now for anyone looking to attend MUG. Um, give me one second, and I will have it 
it is a separate registration and RSVP than uh, your mug registration. So if you would like to attend, please see the chat window now. And submit your, excuse me, sent that to only Taylor Munns, who's already attending. It is at, no, there's no extra cost uh, to attend MUG, uh, so it is included in your AU registration, and it would be great to see uh, people who attended this, this webinar there. And that email address as well on the screen right now, eva.kastner at autodesk.com. She'll be a great resource if you have any questions about MUG. So Matt, I think we're, we've covered everything we want on our end. Uh, looks like we are right around noon right now, so the end of the webinar. Um, looks like we still have some questions that are flowing in. And again, you can reach out to us with the email addresses we provided. Um, and first of all, I want to say thank you very much for everyone who attended. Thanks.